Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist trying to save the ocean and its inhabitants. I'm joining you today on a rainy Monday evening. Just finished up work and some light exercise to kind of reset my brain and I'm starting to think about what I want to try and knock out in the week ahead. In the previous episode, we continue to build upon the diving system, tying some restrictions of the depth at which you can dive to your diving skill level, and polishing up the air consumption system by making it a calculation based on a simulated air volume, which can be increased by equipping scuba gear. With all that, the mechanics of just being underwater in general are starting to feel a lot better. The problem is, there's nothing to actually do once you're down there. My procedurally generated underwater areas have no flora or fauna yet, and there are no underwater mechanics to try and save those organisms from corruption as you can on the surface. I think this will be the path we start down in this devlog. Over this past weekend, as I usually try to do between videos, I tackled some technical debt. This mostly focused on the inventory, which I want to show you quickly. You may remember from much earlier episodes in this series that I had designed a three inventory system. Basically the player had a collection bag, a buoyancy compensator vest, and a set of specimen jars. Each of these served as a standalone inventory that would be home to different types of items. Long story short, this turned out to just be way more hassle than it was fun. Even when playtesting myself, I would pick up an object classified as a tool, open my inventory, and be frustrated that I had to swap from the collection bag to the buoyancy compensator vest to see it. I also didn't have any kind of UI in place to tell the player which inventory an item was sorted into, so the whole thing was just confusing. As a result, at least for now, I've just removed two of those three inventories. The player now has just one collection bag, which has more space than before, and I've added some new equipment slots for accessories for the player where those old inventory selection buttons were. In addition to that, you'll see that the top row of the inventory is highlighted here. This is probably not a perfect nor final solution, but what this is meant to indicate is that the items placed into this top row will appear in the item bar, which you can see once I dismiss the field notes here. I didn't actually have a way to reorganize this item bar before, so this is a nice improvement. As it happens, I still have one important fix to make to the inventory this week, which is I need to be able to save it. Right now, nothing you put in the inventory or equip to the player is persisted between launches of the game, and this is obviously pretty important for an RPG. So my plan is to kick off this week by closing the book on this inventory tech debt before moving back to the underwater scene. I think I'm a little short on time tonight, I'm gonna make dinner before too long and then try to catch a basketball game with Kate, but I will see what I can get wrapped up tonight and tomorrow morning. Hey everyone, back with just a quick update here on Tuesday evening after dinner. I'm happy to share that after a productive session this morning and just a little bit of cleanup after work, I was able to finish up all the work I wanted to on the inventory system. So if I go ahead and launch the game here, the first thing you'll notice is that when I open the field notes, there is already stuff in the inventory, which means this inventory does actually save correctly when we save the game and close it. So if I start to move some stuff around here into these various slots and go ahead and hit escape and save and quit, we can boot the game right back up and we'll see that the player is wearing that snorkel mask that we equipped right before we saved and it is still there. And of course, apart from just the saving inventory, I don't really know what prompted me to do this, but I decided to go ahead and create some kind of placeholders for the inventory slots. This is not a perfect solution. I'm still thinking some tool tips could be better here to let the player know what kind of items you can put where. But for now we have placeholders for the head, the torso, the feet, the legs, the back, and some accessory slots here. These are kind of supposed to look like rings and maybe a slot here for the dive watch. On the tail end of this inventory cleanup, my plan was to sit down tonight and get started on some of the organisms that will ultimately populate the underwater scene. Now that I'm actually at that point, I'm kind of reflecting on my very busy day I had at work and thinking that I probably should take the night off. When I get that feeling, I try not to ignore it. So I'm just gonna kick back tonight, recharge, and prepare for an early morning workout and development session tomorrow.
Hey everyone, checking back in on Wednesday evening here with kind of an unexpected update. As I started on my task to create my first new organism for the underwater biome tonight, I found myself revisiting an old question, one that I discussed probably within the first handful of Dolphin's devlogs. This question is whether or not I should have a base organism scene that I inherit from when creating new organisms. When I first started Dolphin, my default answer to this was yes, and I did have such a class. However, before too long, as I started to lean more into composition over inheritance, I decided to remove this relationship, opting for the flexibility of composing my new organisms however I wanted to with no restrictions. As I near the phase of Dauphin's development that will require me to create a lot of organisms, it's becoming clear to me that inheritance does have a place here. Despite how different these organisms may look and feel to the player, there are some behaviors they will all share, like dropping loot when they're saved from corruption and rewarding the player conservation experience based on their individual organism data. So tonight I've drafted up a new organism base class. Everything you see here will be true for all of my organisms. They will be kinematic body 2Ds with a sprite, corruption component, and loot table, and when they're saved from corruption they will signal that out to the global signal bus and drop a loot item if their loot table contains anything. If I didn't have this base class, I'd have to hook all this stuff up for each new organism, which is a lot of overhead, and if I ever wanted to make a sweeping change to all organisms, I'd have to go back and update each one of them individually. I think this is the right move going forward, but unfortunately it means I'll be refactoring all of my existing organisms since you can't really plug an inheritance relationship into place like this after the initial creation of the scene. That might take a while, but I know it's going to be a positive change for the game, so I'm just going to dive in and we will catch up when I'm done. Hey everyone, fast forward to Friday morning and I'm happy to report that the organism refactor is complete. Every living organism in the game, meaning not only our sand crabs and cave bats, but also my various trees and shrubs, and even the cave mushrooms, now extend my new organism class. The positive impact of this change on the game is already evident. Right out of the box, all of our existing organisms and any new ones I create will interact with the corruption system, meaning they are corruptible by any other organism that's corrupted and can be saved from corruption by the player. I could, and indeed did, have this functionality hooked up manually to at least the palm trees I think before, but now that this happens automatically across the board, it makes the whole corruption system feel so much more impactful on the island you're exploring. Given the success of this refactor, I'm going to give myself one more task before I hopefully wrap up the episode for release tomorrow. I want to use this new organism class to create our first life underwater, and I'll probably keep this simple with just a few aquatic plants, but I think that'll be a great first step to help bring the underwater scene to life. Alright y'all, time for the final update of the devlog. As you can imagine, it didn't take too long to get up and running with a few new organisms. I was able to steal some art from my larger underwater concept and create both what I'm calling a tube coral and a sea vine. With those new organisms created, I just needed to figure out how to spawn them, and this is where I took a bit of a shortcut for now. For the time being, I've just dropped them into a Y-sort node within my temperate ocean floor chunk. This chunk is basically tiled across the bottom of my procedurally generated ocean scenes when those scenes are tagged as being in a temperate biome. As a result, when we dive down, we now see some wonderful new color on the seafloor. This is a great first step, but it's opened up so many new development tasks. For starters, I don't want to be statically placing these organisms and have them looping in the same pattern across the underwater scene. It would be great if I could spawn them in programmatically, kind of like I do with the trash that spawns on the island. On top of that, because these are organisms now, they are corruptible, but the player currently has no way to battle corruption underwater. These are all things we'll begin to explore in the next devlog. As always, I want to thank everyone who supports this channel and Dolphin's development on Patreon. If you've signed up recently but haven't seen your sponsored shrimp added to the tank yet, don't worry. At this point, I'm just waiting on new shipments from my local fish store, so it will happen soon. Your name is on a checklist and will not be forgotten. I want to give a special shout out to my Garami and Beta supporters. Cody Odin, Finnick Foo Games, Mega Ombre, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, Binary Chef, and Elena. And my Beta supporters are Vlad Sunny, Deluz, Happy Hippie, and Avant. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I definitely had a blast this week improving some of my foundational code and finally bringing the underwater scene to life. Stay tuned for the next episode, and until then, stay safe.